Welcome, friends, to this daily devotion. I'm Pastor Mark, and along with Pastor Wesley, we serve the United Methodist Church of New Lenox, and we welcome you to this time where we can join together to grow closer in love of God and neighbor. Take a deep breath, breathing in God's presence, breathing out the concerns of the day, that we may know God is with us, that we may come to the cross, lay our burdens down, and be raised up to new and eternal life, now and always. Hear the affirmation in our petition. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. John chapter 1, verse 35 through 39. Jesus said to him, If you are able, all things can be done for one who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out, I believe, help my unbelief. Mark 9, 23 through 24. Friends, this week we've been asking this great question. As we are finishing up our Christian year already, it's hard to believe. What are you looking for? And I hope maybe you've started to parse together some answers for what you're looking for. And maybe even make some steps, some plans, some uh, resolutions, or maybe even a covenant about how you might prepare the soil for Christ in your life. Our uh, scripture today comes from, excuse me, our anthology reading today comes from Sermon 89 by John Wesley. Who then is a wise one and endured with knowledge among you? Let this person resolve this day, this hour, this moment, the Lord assisting to choose in all the preceding particulars the more excellent way. And let this one steadily keep it both with regard to sleep, prayer, work, food, conversation, and diversions, and particularly with regard to the employment of that important talent, money. Let your heart answer to the call of God. From this moment, God being my helper, I will lay up no more treasures upon earth. This one thing I will do, I will lay up treasure in heaven. I will render unto God the things that are God's, all my goods, all my heart. God bless the reading from John Wesley's sermon, Sermon 89. Remember what Sermon 89 was entitled. It's obviously on the scripture, <laughs> well, uh, not to store up treasures on earth, but to store up treasures in heaven. It's, uh, it's so easy. Like I just, you just, we come at it again and again. And Jesus said it again and again. And, you know, it's like, it's like the 365 times in Bi the Bible that God says, don't be afraid. And yet we we're afraid all the time. We're afraid we are, we're fearful people. And this is the same way we know. That every, everything here, everything in this room will disappear. My body, I, even today, I helped to return a casket we used for Good Friday last year to the funeral home. And one day, my body may be in one of those. Regardless, it will stop working and we'll have to go somewhere. <laughs>
So why do we build up, store up, focus on, search for so many earthly things? When there's so much more. And we know it, but we need to we need to remind ourselves that there are good things. Just like we don't need to be afraid. We don't have to have our value in the things we have, the people we know. Our value should be in that we are loved. We are children of God. And that God actually finds happiness in us for who we are, for what we do. And so we present everything we are, everything we have to God, because it's all God's anyway. Our final scripture reading today comes from Hebrews 11, 8 through 12. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was going to receive as an inheritance. He went out without knowing where he was going. By faith, he lived in a land that he had been promised as a stranger. He lived in tents along with Isaac and Jacob, who were co-heirs of the same promise. He was looking forward to a city that had foundations, who architect and builder is God. By faith, even Sarah received the ability to have a child, though she herself was barren and past the age for having children, because she believed that the one who promised was faithful. So descendants were born from one man, and he was as good as dead. They were as many as the number of stars in the sky and as countless as the grains of sand on the seashore. God bless the reading today. At the end of the day, our journey, what we're looking for is guided by our faith. And and some of us may feel like, I just don't have faith. I don't have a strong faith. I'm so easily tossed and turned. But here's the good news, friends. Faith is itself a gift. It's not something you will yourself to have. It's not something the strong have. If you claim I'm faithful, it's only because God has given me that faith. If I am faithful, it's only because God has graced me with that amount of faith. I don't have the ability. I wake up every day. Not so much anymore, but certainly early on, well out of my league. How am I going to do this? By faith. I mean, I, these days I wake up every day praising God <laughs> and thanking God for so many things in my life that are good and wonderful and beautiful and true. I don't thank God for the things. I don't thank God for the stuff. I thank God for you for worship, for people, for love. And I pray for faith. That I'll have just enough faith to do what I need to do. To follow where I'll need to go. To follow where I'm being led. To do the ministry I'm called to do. To love God and love neighbor. To love my family. To love my church. To love you. That's all the faith I need. And you can pray it too. You may know, like, I'm searching and I know and, and I this is what I need to do, but I don't have the faith. Pray for it. You'll find it because God can do anything God wants. <laughs> and God wants what's best for you. God wants what's good for you. God finds happiness in you. God will give you the world. God already has. And God has given you life forever and ever. On this final day of the week, we reflect on our offerings, how we can serve and give with our time, our talents, and our treasures, how we are called to be an offering in all things we do. Let us reflect in a moment how we may continue to grow in giving and adopt an attitude of gratitude.
Friends, let us pray the Wesley Covenant Prayer. I am no longer my own but thine. Put me to what thou wilt. Rank me with whom thou wilt. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed by thee or laid aside for thee. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. And now, O glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thou art mine, and I am thine, so be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Let us pray the prayer that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, I leave you with these words from John Wesley. O Lord, may nothing dwell in my soul but your pure love alone, till my every thought, word, and act be love. Yes, Lord, may your love possess me whole. You're my joy, my treasure, my crown. Until next time, friends, God bless. Goodbye. Amen.